right, so this is my nursing brain sheet that I used back when I worked in telemetry. And just as a disclaimer, this is completely fake made up patient information. So if the medical treatment is incorrect with the diagnosis, please know that this is just made up. So I created this document on Word. And what I did was actually just create this side and I copy pasted it four times because our ratio was one of four, one nurse, four patients. I included an extra line up here because these numbers were always so great to have on hand. So this is the unit code number and it's so there's so many doors on the unit and it's so easy to forget especially when you're in a rush but if you have a piece of paper you can just whip that out and bam that's the number and then here i put the date here and put the unit phone number and this is so great especially when patients are wondering what number they can give their family members so that they can call them or when you're trying to get orders from doctors or anyone from the healthcare team and you may have to leave a callback number you can just take this out there it is and it's always great to have that on hand here and put the charge nurse number the house supervisor director and your own nurse phone number and this is because we always had to update the whiteboard and it's so hard to memorize all these numbers especially when you're in a busy shift so it's just great to have everything on one sheet of paper all right, and then on each side, as you may notice, I have one side for each patient because I copy pasted this four times. And so here I would take a patient label from the patient's chart and our hospital allows us to do this. And if your hospital allows you to do that, I highly recommend it because it just contains so much great information just on one piece of paper sticker and then you don't have to write anything. And what I used to do is highlight the patient's name and the room number so that it sticks out. And when I'm in a rush, I can just take this sheet out and I can see it. And oftentimes it would also have the doctor's name. Um, another tip is that you can also include other healthcare number, healthcare members names. And I would actually write it right here or up here, just so I know who's on the healthcare team. For example, if you have like a cardiologist on board, GI team, registered dietitian, etc. Here, I would put the code status of the patient and also um, sometimes I would put if they had advanced directive up here or not. Here, I would include the diagnosis, their past medical history, and then any allergies and I would write the reaction. Here, we have the vital signs at the hospital I used to work at. It was every four hours and I was day shift, so I would take it at 8, 12, and at 4 p.m. Here is if the patient's diabetic, I would include AccuChecks, I write the value and if they had to have any insulin coverage and I would put the number there too. Here, since I worked in telemetry, I would include the rhythm and then the IV. For IV, you can also put the date that it was started so that you know when to change it. Also, if they have any fluids running, I would put that underneath that. And then here I would put the diet and if they have any RD consult pending, um, here I put the oxygen delivery, whether it's room air, nasal cannula, or even if they're intubated, I would put the values over here. Here is the VTE or the venous thromboembolism and their score. At the hospital I used to work at, every patient had either STDs, Lovenox, or both, or they're on heparin. It's so important because we don't want any DDTs and if a patient didn't have any or neither, maybe they're like a new admin, you definitely want that. So I call the doctor or any healthcare team member on the cardiology team and get that, you know, ordered. Here I included the Braden score and just a quick review, Braden score is for pre predicting pressure ulcer risk and it's a score up to 23. Um, it's always great when a patient, you know, doesn't have any risk, but sometimes that is not the case. So at the hospital I used to work at, a score less than 12 would require a wound care consult. Um, just as a review, like 13 to 14 is like a moderate risk, 15 to 18 is a mild risk, and then 19 to 23 is no risk. Here I would include where the patient's from, and this is so great because you definitely want to know where the patient's from, especially when they're about to be discharged. And I would include if it's um, if they're from home, SNF, homeless, or any other facility. Here I would write down the skin. I would also sometimes put the grading score over here and whether or not they would need a wound care consult. At the hospital I used to work at, we always had to have another nurse co-sign our skin assessment. So that's why I put our own section for it. And I would also include like any treatments um, if they do have some wounds. Here is the pending or to do. And here I would write my shift goals, if there's any discharge plans, if any case managers involved, any pending orders, that's where I would include it. And this is especially where I, 
I would like update, especially getting change of shift report. That way I would know why the patient's still here or what's the plan, such as are they gonna be discharged? Where they, if they're not gonna be discharged, why are they still here? So this often helps you guide your day. And I try to complete whatever is here. And if I can't, I would inform the incoming nurse. Here is a note section. So I, as you may have noticed, I didn't put like assessment section and this is actually where I would put it. I highly recommend don't rely on other people's assessments. Always do your own assessments because anything can happen in a shift. I oftentimes would write any abnormal assessments on this note section. I would also, since I worked on a cardiac unit, I would write if they had a bowel movement, what's their daily weight, what's their previous weights. I would trend that. That's a huge part, especially if they have CHF. So, um, so yeah, that, that's that. And then I would also include any extra information such as when patients, family members wanted us to call them and just to let them know how the patient's doing. And by the way, going back to skin, you can also include the locations of the wounds here. If they have like any staples, any drains, that's just why I had like this section over here. All right, so let's go to the left. So here I would include the scheduled medications. I would write it as a checklist and check it off as I go. And this is so important because, you know, if you're like having a really rough day and you don't have time to chart real time, at least you have this piece of paper that you can write down when you give the med, just like write a quick, you know, the time on there and then you can just back track. It's, you know, it's really hard to do everything real time. So that's just like a tip. I would definitely try to document the meds real time. Some of your um, hospitals may require it real time, mine did, but that's just like a tip. You um, don't have the time to chart. All right, and then down here I included the labs. So these are the most common labs that I noticed on the telemetry unit. Also, you know, the of course the cardiac enzyme labs, but these are the most common ones and I would write the abnormal ones in a different color. That way I can be on the alert and on the lookout, especially when we're doing redraws and alerting the healthcare team, especially if they need medications ordered. For example, like in this case, um, several things are red, but like what stands out is the potassium and then I would call and try to get some cater if they have it. All right, and then over here, last but not least, I had like this quick checklist and this just helped me stay organized, especially when I am behind on documenting. And also it helps me make sure that I am turning patients, I am doing the vitals, just like a quick checklist. And last but not least, micro, this is like the UA, any cultures, you can put the results there and then whether or not the patient's in isolation, if they're contact or standard precautions. All right, and then last but not least, some quick tips in general. So I noticed that some nurses have like, okay, it's completely up to you what you wanna do, but this is just some observations. Some nurses would have uh, like one sheet for each patient. For me, that didn't work. I really liked having just one sheet because it's so easy for me to lose paper. So if you're like that too, I highly recommend just having one sheet of paper. That way you can just have one sheet of paper in your pocket and it don't have too much stuff like, you know, around you because um, shifts can get really busy and hectic. Um, another tip is that if anything emergency happens, because you have this sheet, you can always backtrack it. As I mentioned before, if you run out of room here, you can always write it down here. You can always make it work for you. If something doesn't work on here, obviously like take it off and write whatever works for you, but this is just work for me. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, let me know what you think and let me know what else you'd like to see from me. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.